I will see you again, Ling Chi. Without a doubt, madam. I always do business with you. Who's there? Richard and Wentworth Rainey, attaché to the American Consul at Shanghai. <laughs> and furthermore, who wants to know? Hello. Someone has been going through my stuff. I'm looking for the little trinket you're taking back to Lee Fong. <laughs> well, they'd hardly be after my socks. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound so good. I guess it's just as well you're going back to the States. Oh, by the way, I brought your passport over. And the Maru sails tomorrow at noon. Thanks. Well, give my best to Frisco. <laughs> I will. I wish you'd drop me a line. The uh, Drake Apartments. I'm stopping there with my brother Jim. Sure, I'll send you a postal. <laughs> Do that. Well, best of luck. And I'll try and get down to the ship and see you off. Thanks for coming over. Right out. Mr. Bonner? Yes? May I have a few words with you? Why, certainly. Won't you come in? Thank you. Mr. Bonner, I'm at the... You have uh, heard of him, perhaps. Mr. Vanoff is a collector of considerable note. Oh, indeed. Well, it's a harmless hobby, I suppose, but uh, I'm not interested. Oh, indeed. I was informed quite to the contrary. I was in hopes that uh, you and I might do some business. Well, I'm not uh, really interested in buying anything. No, you must understand. It is I who wish to buy. I don't get you. You have in your possession a uh, certain Chinese dagger. I should like to purchase it. I'm sorry, but it's not for sale. Now, Mr. Bonner, I shall make you a generous offer. Say, uh, a thousand dollars. A thousand? <laughs> why, I don't think it's worth a tenth of that. Well, then, uh, why don't you take advantage 
of your good luck. I'm sorry, but you see, it isn't mine. It's in uh, your possession. Then uh, why not consider? I'm not in the habit of selling property that doesn't belong to me. Mr. Varanoff is not in the habit of taking no for an answer. Well, this is one time that he'll have to. You're very foolish, Mr. Bonner. I offer you money for the dagger. Others might not be so scrupulous. Are you suggesting that someone is liable to steal it? Well, I'll take that chance. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to continue with my packing. Good day. Mr. Bonner, I must trouble you for that dagger. All right. I think I'll keep this as a souvenir. You win, Mr. Bonner. Mr. Varnoff wishes to see you, madame. Mr. Varanoff? Show him in. Will you be seated? My name is probably unknown to you. I only came recently to this country. But the fame of Madame Wing Su is known even in Shanghai. Indeed. And what is said of me? That your wit is second only to your charm. I hardly think you came here to make pretty speeches, Madam. <laughs> True. I came to solicit your aid, Madam. In what way? I have been commissioned to secure a certain dagger belonging to the royal house of Lipong. It is brought to this country by an American Rob Banner. Our efforts to secure the dagger and road were stopped. Fortunately, the American was put on his guard. And do you think I may succeed where you have failed? With your power and friends, 
I am sure of it. Perhaps. This dagger, is it of great value? Apparently, to the gentleman who desires it, is a great work of an ancient empire. I am sufficiently paid for securing it. And? And the half. What I will get will be yours. It belongs to the house of Li Fong, you say. Hmm. One of that name resides here. I wonder. Well, Jim, here I am. Why, Ralph! I hardly thought you'd recognize your brother. I hope I was able to fool those other birds. Well, you didn't land in that outfit, did you? Well, I had to if I wanted to land on my feet. No, I didn't fool them. Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> the reception committee awaiting me outside. What did you do? Start a revolution over there or something? <laughs> no. Just minded my own business. Well, then what's all the excitement about? I called on Lee Fong's honorable family to collect a little token for him and start at home. And from then on, boy, <laughs> my life sounds like a dime novel. <laughs> Attempt to strangle yours truly in his bed at the hotel. Attacked on board ship. Stateroom rifled. What for? Well, to my benighted intellect, it seems that a certain person craves Li Fong's gift. And I'll be mighty lucky if I get rid of the foolish thing. Well, is it, is it very valuable? I wouldn't say so, but I won't breathe easily until I deliver it to him. Is there anything I can do for you? Yes. <laughs> you can come along with me. On a night like this? <laughs> Why, you don't think a little thing like that annoys me after what I've gone through, do you? All right, Ralph. When I get my coat, I'll be right with you. Good. What is it, honored father? Why are you so nervous today? Today is momentous, my dear child, for both of us. What it brings forth may change the course of our lives. My promise to your father will soon be fulfilled. I brought you back to your land to be educated among your people. When Bonner brings me back that which I have sent for, you must take your place among them. Without you? You would not be accepted otherwise.
Your master is expected. Don't you know me, Li Fung? Oh, Bond. Of course I know you. What? Why this strange apparel? I'll tell you about that later. First, let me get rid of this. My people, they did not fail me. You have done well, my son. Yes, I was lucky to get back alive. You mean you were followed? Yes, ever since I left Shanghai. Then others know about this. It looks like it. But I don't understand why these people go to all this trouble. Follow me halfway across the world for a dagger. I will show you, my son. Boy! What a beauty! And I've had this all the time and didn't know it. It was a king's ransom. Listen, you'll have to notify the police immediately. Go phone them, quick! I'm sorry to have to leave you, but I've got to go look for my brother. I'll be right back. I beg your pardon. Oh, it, it is I who should beg your pardon. I came in to escape the rain. Uh, I guess that's everything. Thank you. There you are. Oh, the mirror is broken. <laughs> You're not superstitious, are you? A little. Well, oh. you don't need to worry about that because I'm the one who'll get the bad luck because I broke it. Oh, I hope not. I should hate to be the instrument of your misfortune. Huh. Well, don't let that worry you. Good night. Good night. Dr. Robert Lightning, please. Hello. Hello, Doctor. This is Jim Bonner over to Drake Apartments. Could you come over right away, please? Yes, right away. Thank you.
This man that came to see Lee Fong just before the tragedy, do either one of you know who he was? He was dressed very rough, very dirty. I don't want to let him in, but Master, he's very glad to see him. Hmm. And neither of you saw him leave? A man came into the room just as I did. He was well dressed and very clean. Where is he now? I do not know. He said he would come back. I see. Well, did you find anything? This. The weapon's gone. Hmm. Chinese workmanship. Just as I thought. Another one of the bottom of it. But what about those two white guys that were in here, Chief? That's right. Listen, Chief, put me in charge of this case, will you? I got a hunch that I can bring in the murderer. All right. I'll put you in charge of the case, but I don't think you're going to find a thing. Well, good luck, I know. I'm liable to fool you, Chief. Now, Miss, will you give me a full description of this bird? What bird? The bozo that crashed in here and then did the Houdini. You know, the egg that busted in here just after your old man was... You know. He means the young man that ran in. Oh, what do you wish to know about him? Just what did he look like? Oh, he was very nice. That's great. Now, all I got to do is run around town looking for a guy that looks very nice. Well, let me tell you something. When I get my hands on that guy, the case is closed. That is the guy. What do you do? Name? James Bonner. What's yours? Horatio Dooley. None of your business what my name is. Just what were you doing here this evening? I don't see where that concerns you. Oh, I beg your pardon. I came here with my brother. He had an appointment here. Yeah? You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. <laughs> All right, the date. Well, the date means that uh, I'll be over to see you. Say, listen, has Flatfoot found any new clues yet? Flatfoot? Oh, you mean the man who makes the funny noises? I do not think so. <laughs> I don't wonder. One thing that puzzles him is the Ying Su. You call it Poppy. Mr. Flatfoot thinks it means something. Maybe Flatfoot isn't as dumb as he looks. No, he couldn't be. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you.
I hope you will pardon this intrusion, but I happened to be in the neighborhood and saw your name on the design downstairs and thought I'd crash in. So I see. Thank you. I hope you don't mind. On the contrary, I am honored. We might meet again, but I was afraid you might think me bold if I suggested it. Thank you very much. How did you find my name? Why, you dropped this last night in the hallway. Oh, my card. It must have dropped out of my bag. How careless of me. Well, if you hadn't have been, I don't see how I would ever been able to locate you. Your name seems familiar. I knew a Ralph Bonner in Shanghai. Yes, he was my brother. Hmm. It is a small world after all. And how is your dear brother? He's dead. How sad. Please accept my condolences. Thank you. Was he ill long? No. It was very sudden. Recently? Only last night. Last night? How terrible. Funny that you were so near to him, only outside his door. Life plays strange tricks sometimes. Yes. Your name is... Uh, Madame Ying Su? Oh. In English, that means poppy, doesn't it? You are very learned, my friend. Oh, no. Not learned. Only I pick up things once in a while, and I always remember them. I'm sorry. It must be getting late. Must you go? But you haven't touched your wine. Thank you just the same, but I don't drink. Perhaps you are wise. Thank you for a very delightful chat. Good night, Mr. Bonner. Good night, Madam Poppy. Are my instructions being carried out? Yes, Madam. He's followed day and night.
You know, I'm awfully sorry I didn't see you last night, but I was tied up. Tied up? You mean you were a prisoner? No, not exactly, but there were times when I was wondering if I was going to get out all right. I do not understand, didn't you? Would you have cared if, if I had been? Oh, yes. I have lost my dear Lee Fong. I could not bear to lose you. Promise me you will be very careful. I promise to be just as careful as I can. Thank you. Let us sit down. Let's talk about something else. You, for instance. There is nothing to tell about me. I have lived in this house with Lee Fong ever since I was a little baby. You know, I was thinking it was very strange that a white girl like you should be the ward of Chinaman. Does it? Lee Fong was very good to me. He is the only father I have ever known. My own father died in China. There was an uprising. He gave his life to save Lee Fong. Then you're going to continue to live here? Where else can I go? But you have your father's people. I do not know where they are or who they are. I have no one. Yes, you have. You mean I have you? You will take my father's place? Well, I don't think I'm exactly the type, do you? No. Well, uh, there are other relations, you know. You mean uncles and aunts? Yes, and, and then there are cousins and um, grandfathers. And, of course, their husbands. You would make a very nice cousin. <laughs> Is that the best you can do for me? I think you're trying to make me happy, to smile. No. You would rather I would cry? Please, let's be serious. I know you're going to think I'm crazy. But then things really do happen like this. You just see a face and... Bluey, it's all over. And then no one else in the world matters after that. I think that is very true. Then you feel the same way I do? No. I do not think it right to be so happy now. So soon. It seems so dreadful, so cruel that someone should wish to kill him. I think I know why they did it. Why? Tell me. Well, I can't tell you right now, but, but I will tell you, because I'm on the trail of the killers right now. <coughs> sure you know all about it. Why shouldn't you? You know, I think in that last sneeze of yours, you blew your other brain out. Oh, the wise guy, huh? Yeah, well, let me tell you something. I sneeze to keep the dust off of my brain. Now, what were you doing in this room that night? I think I've already told you that, haven't I? Yeah, well, I'm not sap enough to believe it. You were trying to make your getaway when you barged into this girl here. Then you had to pull an alibi. I will not permit you to talk to my guest in that manner. He has told the truth, and I believe him. Thank you, Miss Lotus. I think I'll be running along. Yes, you better while you got the chance. Remember, Dooley is on your trail. Oh, I'll get you yet. You know, I think it would be a good idea if you stuck around here and watched Miss Lotus. She may be in danger. You would think of that. <laughs> Watch Miss Lotus so I can't be watching you. Goodbye. I'll drop in again sometime when there isn't a crowd. I think you have been very rude to my friend. Now listen, baby. You don't know much about life. That guy isn't your friend. He's a bad egg. I do not believe it. All right. I'll prove it to you. Last night, I searched that bird's room. I found these. You remember there was a poppy found alongside of the body of Li Fong? Well, doesn't that make it clear? Why, it's his trademark. Whenever one of his gang pull a trick, they always leave a poppy 
It's a pet stunt of these gangs. They think it's smart. I do not believe it. Li Fong always taught me to listen to the promptings of my heart. It tells me he is not bad. Oh, baby, that heart gag is the bunk. You should see what listening to the heart got me. You must meet Mrs. Dooley sometime. Well, just the same, I'm going to keep on his trail and prove it to you. Listen, I get out on a case... Come here, my good man. Ah. I want to talk to you. How long have you been sitting there? What time was it when you first came over? Ah, you come to me. You have to to me. Wait a minute. It's going to do you no good to lie to me. Now, I want straight answers. What time was it when you first sat down there? That's better. How long has it been since this dame's been running this place? All right, go on, beat it. Bonner is here again. Oh, the other one. It might be advisable to let him join his dear brother. He is conscious this morning, but pretends that he is too weak to talk. Wait a little. Then perhaps we can persuade him that it would be wise to gain strength. I didn't see anyone downstairs, so I just thought I'd crash in again. So I see. I hope I haven't intruded. No. If you're busy, uh, I'll come back some other time. No. Now that you're here, perhaps you'd better stay. And what if I don't choose to? Your choice is immaterial in the matter, Mr. Bonner. You came here unbidden, crashed in, as you so quaintly put it. Perhaps it would be difficult to crash out. Did it ever occur to you that it would be rather dangerous for you to hold me here against my wishes? Perhaps my friends would become worried about me and start an investigation? No. Your friends would not be concerned because you did not take them into your confidence. Don't you realize you have been watched every minute of the day and night? 
Don't you think I know why you're here? Forgive me, Madam Poppy. I seem to have underestimated your intelligence. But you were Mr. Bonner. <laughs> I wouldn't be that guy for a million bucks. He hasn't been here for three whole days. No, and he won't be here again. Not as long as he knows I'm around. Then I wish you would go away. Listen, baby. Why don't you get that guy out of your mind? Why? Why, I've nearly got enough on him now to send him to the pen. What pen? Well, it ain't the fountain pen. It's the who's go, the big house, the prison. No, I won't let you. You want us to get the birds who got Lee Fong, don't you? Well, this Bonner is the ringleader. I've been shadowing him for three days. He hangs around in a joint down in Chinatown, run by a Madam Ying Su. Madam Ying Su? Yeah. Madam Poppy. What? Ying Su means Poppy. Oh, yeah? That cinches it. Now I know I'm on the right track. What is this to do with him? Listen, this deck is his sweetie, his girl. Broad? You mean she is fat? Yeah. No. I'm sorry for you. She's a knockout. A swell looker. Pretty? You got it. And he's nuts about her. Nuts? Yeah, nuts. And if you want me to prove it to you, you can come along with me and I'll take you down to that joint and I'll let you see for yourself. I will go with you. You see, this is the neighborhood that this guy's been hanging around for the last three days. I've been shadowing him down here. I don't like this place, Mr. Dooley. Uh, don't worry. You're with Dooley and it's all right. And I've got you to thank for a lot. You tipped me off about this Madam Poppy. But I think you're wrong about Mr. Bonner. What, me, Dooley, wrong? <laughs> I'm going to take you in here and prove to you that I'm right. I've got the right dope on this guy and I'm going to show you. Now, when we get inside, I want you to keep quiet. Don't do a thing until I tell you. You got that? You better sit down. I'll look around, see if I can find him. The ward of Li Fong is here. Excellent. It should not be difficult to make her talk. Why not let me talk to her? Why should I do that? She knows me and she trusts me. And she might listen to reason. I fail to understand why you should want to do this service for me. Well, I figure the, the quicker you get the dagger, the quicker I'll be free. You are an optimist, my friend. Well, won't do any harm to let me talk to her. No. On the contrary. I think it might be useful. I wish you luck, my friend. Thank you. Are you looking for Mr. Bonner? I'll take you to him. Oh, 
Mr. Jim. I'm so glad I found you. Sit down. Well, I hope you're satisfied. You certainly got me into a swell mess. What's the matter? What's the matter? You know what's the matter. You're going to tell me everything. You understand, don't you? I understand. What do you want me to do? If you tell them where the dagger is, they let us both go. You know where it is, don't you? Yes. Let her escape. She couldn't tell you anything. She doesn't know where it is. You lie adroitly, Mr. Bonner. I've had a very excellent teacher, Madam Poppy. This is a fine how do you do. I'd like to get my hands on the guy that threw that. Up there. There's nobody up there. I must be hot on somebody's trail. They're trying to get rid of me. Where is Miss Lotus? Didn't she get back here yet? No. She must still be at the tea room. But if you were really wise, you would have escaped with her. I haven't finished my business here. Your business is finished everywhere. Those who betray me, Mr. Bonner, live to regret it. Although you will not regret long. And my brother? Did he die of regret? Your brother was a fool. He might have been safe and wealthy today if he had been willing to listen to reason. You mean if he'd have been willing to turn over Lee Fong's property to you? How much better that would have been for all of you. Dead men have no use for treasure. I'm glad you're safe. You must come quick. 
Jim is in there. What's that? I'm afraid that what they might do to him. What? They're holding him prisoner. I knew something was ready to pop. Mac and Jim, go on in there. Bill, Pete, go on down the end there. I'd get you, smart boy. You're under arrest. Under arrest? For what? For the murder of Li Fung. You're crazy. Yeah, like a fox. You can't put it over me like you did the little girl. Dumbbell? Dumbbell, am I? Yes. Haven't got anything on you, huh? No. Well, only this. You were in the room where the crime was committed. A poppy was found alongside the body of the deceased. Then I searched your room. And I found the petals of a poppy carefully hidden away. You and Madame Poppy's little remembrances. Oh, I had my eye on you from the first. And I'll get a conviction on you, or my name isn't Horatio Dooley. And I even found the weapon. Take him out of here. You know, a while ago, when I was talking to you like that, why, I didn't mean it. Of course. So listen, my brother's in here. He's in there. I knew the kid was innocent all the time. His brother just explained it all to me. You're a great detective. I can't help it. But I thought... It's okay. Remember, Dooley was on the job. for us. <laughs> 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 